Right, so we've got our presentation set up. There's three slides, very basic to start with. When you finish the presentation, file, export, and I'll do it on the Mac here. And I'll just open up the saving area. I'll do it to documents, TIFF format, save every slide, and if you change the height to be 1080 it should automatically change the width to be the right size as well that's kind of HD format you can go higher but obviously your video is going to be bigger so that's a kind of good size remember those numbers because when you export your video from iMovie it's the same resolution so when I click on export it will export all the slides into a new folder if I go into my finder and there we go. And if I go into the documents folder, there's presentation two folder with all my slides in. So I'll hide that. I'm in iMovie now. Firstly, I'll change the preferences because I want to get rid of this Ken Burns effect and do crop to fill and change the photo duration to be 20 seconds. So for my Petra Cucci, I want 20 seconds. That just means when I drag all my pictures onto my timeline, it'll all be set up automatically. So once I'm happy with that, then I can add media. So click on the media tab, click on import, and then go and get my uh, folder I did. So into the home folder, into documents. Now I'm not gonna go inside it because if I click on the folder itself and do import all, it will import anything, everything in that folder that it can. So import all, there's my three images. You can see the images because a little camera in the corner. Then I go to my projects, create a new project for this, make sure it's a movie. And then I've got my, all of my images will be in there. So I'll just drag them all in and it will drag them all. I've basically selected them all. And it will drag them all in order. Even if I don't get right in there, drag it to the front and you see it's automatically done 20 seconds so if I click play from beginning and up here there's my image that's going on I'll fast forward it a little bit so it's there and then eventually gets to that bit there and it changes that's slide number two fast forward to there and so forth now I would suggest recording your audio on your phone. Sometimes if you plug in your headphones with a little microphone built in, that works quite well. Sometimes if you just look at the microphone at the end, there, and just talk into there. Don't do it in like a nice area that's kind of like quite soft and stuff. So if, I mean, like literally you can get under the bed clothes. As long as you're not rustling around, that's almost perfect because it deadens all the sound. Whereas this room would be terrible. It's like echoing, it's like hard surfaces. So it makes the sound just really empty. So you can, if you want to, click on record. This will bring in the audio record there. So I can start recording with that. It'll give me a countdown to when it starts. And now I'm recording anything to do there. And you can see the voiceovers there, and that's great. And then when I'm happy with that, I stop that. And I go back and play again. There, and you can see the voiceovers there, and that's great. And then I'm happy with that. And you can see the quality of the voiceover. What were you pressing to hear, right? Eh? Yeah, so just to bring up that little control mm -hmm. there. So normally it's just play and stop. I click on the microphone, mm -hmm. it lets me record. I can change some of the settings here. So if you've got a microphone, things like that, mm -hmm. you're probably better off recording it as a separate file using like the there's like a voice memo uh, on your phone then getting emailing or sending the clip to here so it comes as an audio clip and then you just import the audio clip here and just drag it down to there and you can you can mm -hmm. move all this around so you can move the audio clip around so that it starts there you know you're not being graded on being a hollywood director and like loads of effects and all that kind of stuff but just that slightly better quality can help so if i wanted to record from here now 
just click on the microphone until I get the thing here. You can see the little kind of recording. If I get close to where the microphone is up here, if I click record there, it gives me a countdown. And we're going to get all the noise of the people shouting outside and stuff, but I carry on talking and stuff. This might be better quality. You've got your script, you're reading along. Oh, it isn't great. Stop that there and then start again. All the noise of the people shouting outside and stuff, but I carry on talking and stuff. This might be better quality. Very bad You've got script. Your script. You're reading. And now I'm recording. See that second version? There. There. You can see the voiceover. Because I was there. further away. Because I was further away, the quality is a lot worse. I know the microphone's up here near the top. If you've got a phone, you can sort of test the distance. So if you want to do it chunk by chunk, you could do the whole thing, or you could do it in a group of slides, maybe sort of do a minute's worth of talking for uh, five slides, no, five slides, three slides. Or you could just do it one at a time. But if you get the flow of how it goes between the voice, you can actually sort of move it around, even if you want to have a bit of a gap as well. So you just drag that along there. So that is, and then when you come to export it, at the top right here is the export button when you're happy with how it all looks. You've got the Vimeo option there. And this is where you set the resolution here. So that's the highest resolution you can export from uh, from uh, iMovie to Vimeo. And you need to set the password. You can have a password on it. And then whatever the title is, give them the password. Once you pull that in, you enter in your Vimeo uh, credentials, you know, your login details, and it should export it into that account. And then you're done.